Hello, I'm Robert Hughes. I'm the uh, inspector supervisor in the Northeast Dallas district. I have three inspectors that work for me. And between us, we see about five to seven installations a month. So most of that is residential. Some of it is commercial, but by far the largest part is residential. Typically what we see are not the brand new houses. Most of the houses are at least 10 years old. And frequently, many of them are maybe 30, 40, 40 years old. It does give us some problems in the uh, inspection process just because of the age of the electrical system. So what we do at the city of Dallas is when they fill out a permit application, we go through the plan review process for the building side as well as for the electrical side. In the electrical side, we require a three-line diagram with all the formulas and all the calculations. That's reviewed by our, our plan review guy. After that, they get their permit and they call for inspection. Before we'll go out and inspect it, we have to have a conversation with the installer. We're going to want a time frame to meet him. We want the city plans, the approved plans, and we want to know what kind of system it is because there's so many different types of systems out there. And uh, so we get all that set, and that takes some time. I go out to the, the job site, meet this installer, we look at the system. These common code violations that you see here, those are fairly common. Uh, we see some other things as well. Oftentimes there'll be problems with the panel itself. When they try to put the back feed breaker into a panel that's not large enough, then we usually mark that on the, uh, the drawing. That labeling, let me just address the labeling for a minute. Uh, frequently this is the worst problem out there. They haven't got their labeling properly identified or they don't have enough of it. So labeling is one of the big problems. Uh, we won't leave an installation with a red tag just because the label's incorrect. We always try to work with the guys. I tell them, look, you can get your label made correctly. You can take a picture of it. You can email that picture to me, and I'll sign off on it. Just because there's a lot of time wasted going back to a job site to look at a label that's only like $2. So we try to work with our installers on that. This, this is about grounding. Shall I just go ahead and talk about this? Sure. All right. A lot of times on the older houses, they won't be properly grounded. Sometimes they don't have a ground rod. Sometimes they have a cold water ground. Now, in order to tie this solar system grounding into the existing system, sometimes that takes brand new and grounding all together. Frequently, the contractors wind up putting in two ground rods, two brand new ground rods, and they tie into whatever's there on the house. That usually works out good. When I'm out there looking at the, uh, the rooftop, we just want to make sure that the bonding wires are on the frame, and they come down to the main point of attachment. So grounding is pretty consistent. Now this one's something new. Uh, the wire color coding in the 2014 code, I guess it's the next slide. Let's see. The uh, the color co coding on the, uh, the grounded circuit is white and the, uh, the equipment grounding conductor is green. This is for the 110 volt stuff.
microinverters, uh, they disconnect the DC power at the module. So if you lose power, then all of the wiring going up to the roof is out and you don't have any live DC circuits. If you've got a regular system with a DC coming off the module and the power go goes out, it only kills the inverter. It doesn't kill the power coming off the roof. So this has been a problem and uh, I didn't see my, I didn't see, anyway, yeah. Anyway, there was a couple of uh, slides in here. New for the 2014 is a requirement that is addressed in here for a manual shutdown and an automatic shutdown on the, uh, all the conductors, not just the inverters. So new for 2014 in the, uh, in the code is, uh, a requirement for an emergency system shutdown. We haven't seen any of these systems yet because they're new. What we typically expect we're going to have is either we'll have the microinverter and it'll shut down and there'll be a button like a typical big red button down by the solar disconnect. And that'll be your emergency side and then if the power goes off, it'll automatically disconnect at the, at the uh, module itself. So we think that's going to be relatively easy to do with a microinverter. What the problem seems to be is the regular normal inverter, it will shut down, but you still got the power coming off the roof going to the, micro -inver to the regular inverter. So we think there's going to have to be some type of relay up there at the, at the module, perhaps even at the combining, the combiner box. So there is no system specifically laid out in the code book and all it says is uh, they have to be UL listed and labeled parts. So we're, uh, we're looking forward to that and we think that'll be a, 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 good, a good process to make things safer for the fireman when he gets up on the roof. Uh, the other big change in the 2014 is the requirement on the DC circuits that they're now positive is, is uh, red and negative is black. So that'll be a color coding requirement uh, for everything that's number six and smaller, so you have to have actual colored wire. Previously, there was no requirement for that. So uh, we're looking forward to that. And uh, as these systems and changes and the technology changes, our code cycle only changes every three years. So there's a certain amount of, uh, we as a, uh, government entity have to catch up with technology. So, uh, other than that, any questions? Uh, my question is, is that you said that 2014 requires a manual and an automatic shut, shut off for that uh, PV system Remote. That, that is on the yes. roof that shuts that com system completely off? That you said that that's in the 2014? That's in the new 2014. We're thinking the uh, the manual shutdown will be on the wall close to the where the disconnect and the meter is, but whatever needs to be up on the roof will be like a relay. Okay. So my question is, is that if I adopt the 2014 electrical code, are the are the mm -hmm. installers are their systems currently able to shut that system down by using one of those means? And so if not, then how are they going to meet the NEC 2014? Well, the state has already adopted the 2014, so municipalities are supposed to be getting in line with the state. Well, you know it as well as I do. The municipalities have the right to well, adopt the code or not adopt the code. But my question to the providers of these PV systems would be, are you meeting the current code? And in, unless they have a manual or an automatic shutoff for that array that's on the roof, to, uh, then how are they meeting the requirement of the code? 
like I say, so far we hadn't seen one in person. We've only seen plans, and we've sent those plans back to the, uh, the provider to get the engineering in line with the 2014. But uh, the only way that I know, the inverters will shut down automatically on loss of power. So if it's a microinverter, it'll shut down at the module on the roof. If it's not, if it's just a normal inverter mounted on the side of the wall, it's just going to shut down the power that's between the inverter and the panel. It won't do anything for the DC current coming off the module going over to the inverter. And the only way you can do that that we think is technically feasible it would be with some sort of relay or another more advanced device that we haven't seen yet. No, there are several companies now in the industry that have got remote disconnects. When the code was written, and for those of you that don't know me, I'm on the Solar Industry Advisory Task Force that we interface with the NFPA, National Fire Protection Association. So we help contribute our two cents to the code. But to that extent, uh, when the code was crafted for the 2014 year, it got rather contentious amongst the industry. Uh, they had this remote shutdown requirement, and there was no hardware at that time available to meet it. And even when the 14 book originally got published, uh, it was very, very close. In fact, the folks in the city of Los Angeles, LADWP, Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, have their own code book. They don't even go by the NEC. And the entire state of California had to at least suspend that requirement until the hardware industry caught up and got everything certified. So there are now three companies that I know of that already have product on the market. It is certified UL standards, and we got several more that are coming along for that remote disconnect function. Yeah, we hadn't, like I say, we hadn't seen any yet, but we're expecting to see some next month or this month even. But 